I've been working on a chair for the past several months. The plans for this chair uses arched back slats. These specific slats have 180 degree tenons at the ends that kind of join to the side rails. I decided to use my CNC machine to do the three-dimensional sculpting uh, to accomplish the curvature in the back slat. I made two of these chairs, so there's a total of 10 slats that need to be fabricated. Since precision was important and it was kind of a repetitious job, it was the perfect application for a CNC machine. Uh, what you're seeing right here is my starting stock. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is make this tool. Um, it's going to be a locating feature for the wood parts that I'm going to make. Uh, this is just a three quarter inch piece of plywood. I uh, installed it with fasteners and countersunk them so that if there's any rapids or anything like that, I don't have to worry about the machine hitting it. It's white on the top because I painted it. You can see it's just MDF. <laughs> I got this channel cut out in here. This is gonna be my tool. And so I cut um, eight of these blanks. And so they're all like, I mean, exact in terms of length, width, and height. So I made two test parts because I'm gonna make two of these before I run my good material. And I put five thousandths of a relief on the tool. I wanna say 0 .005 on each one of these edges just to make sure that the part fits in. It's okay to have like a little bit of excess. I'm gonna screw all this down. This is just the position these in so you can see got a nice snug fit here uh, the reason this wind up being a test part is i cut it a little short so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wash it out and get it about even and then screw it in i'm going to go ahead and run this i'm going to run the full program on this one and that one make sure i got everything dialed in feeds and speeds are good now i'm gonna do like a production run on these where i do a tool setup and i just run them one one right after another and that'll hopefully save me time and like the um possibility of making a mistake with a tool change or whatever so let me rock this back and forth and make sure it's not going anywhere okay so these are my what we call our production run parts this is like a piston fit down in here i was originally thinking about screwing these in but okay look right here all the way around it's like you can't even stick it in there like at an angle like that you gotta slide it down in and then it puffs some air out when you push on it you hear that Anyway, it's so gratifying that it fits so snugly. Okay, listen to this when I pull this out of here. Listen. It's like suction cupped in there. Like I said. guys this is why we test i mean this turned out really good i think these passes are just too um too deep too aggressive and so it's just breaking this material also when i crash the machine it looks like i knocked my mill out of trim so these are so this thing's like way out of square now i need to square that back up and um i'm getting a lot of breakout here on the side which isn't good I think I might reevaluate how I do this. I'd rather go from the outside in. This is just supposed to be a clearing pass. The idea would, was that it was um, a roughing pass so I'd be able to clean it up. Also, these steps are too big to hit with that ball nose end mill. I mean, there's just too much material left over for the ball nose to really do a good job. I had this really like hot rodded because I was thinking it would save time because to do eight of these, I think the mill time was pretty high, but I think I can dial some things back and see if I can get it to smooth out also I need to trim this out like I said okay okay this is a cylinder square 
it's squared up like 0 0.005 or some, actually I think there's four zeros in there, but you can see I knocked it out. It is no longer straight. You can see daylight right there. And so that's why we're seeing those steps in the part. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back in. Um, I got this to cut out the way I wanted to so you can see what it's doing it just rubs this in and I'll come back with a ball and mill later and cut it I had some trouble there cutting too aggressive and I also had um, I was doing like a pocket cut and I was causing chip out and some other problems and so I wound up doing an adaptive um, tool path and so the way it works it comes from the outside of the tool and it, it puts less stress on the tool and so we we're getting less deflections so let me kind of turn it up a little bit anyway I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out so I'm gonna flip it over and do the back and then I'm gonna do the the ball end mill just to try to get the the contours to come in straight and we'll see how it turns out I just realized it wasn't very clear on what I'm doing here so this is a back slat for a chair and so I'm gonna I took it out of this position I'm just gonna turn it over and set it down in here from the opposite side and it's still going to be retained in this little tool i'm hoping it stays in we're going to find out so anyway um this is the idea so far it's held in here really good no screws originally planned on screwing it in but yeah so the i don't have i already got the mill set up so i'm going to run my roughing pass on this without having to like re-zero or anything and then i'll do the ball end mill on the other side first and then this side Here's how it turned out. Look how crispy this line is here. Uh, you can see these uh, marks. I'm gonna see if I can get those out. I have a one little line here, and I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but I mean, it's pretty small. I think I'm gonna be able to hit this with some sandpaper. So when I do the ones I'm making for my project, I think what I'll do is put these lines, like make a little tighter of a, pattern here so it goes away a little bit but i think I'm, i'll be able to get rid of these with the sander so what i'm going to do now is take these little ink caps and just chop those off and then um i'll pair this back like like an eighth of an inch on the top with a chisel so that it matches and then um mortise my chairs yeah it looks good i'm gonna go sand it up real quick i'll show you what that looks like um so i get this little tenon here i chopped that edge part off they look pretty clean. Might have to pare that down a little bit. It's fit. We'll see. Um, not too bad. So I got rid of those lines with some sandpaper. I use an air sander, random, random orbital, and it takes them takes them off pretty good. You can see it's uh, nice and clean, very smooth. Backside, same deal. So I'm pretty satisfied with this process. Um, that one there didn't work out too good, but hey, like I said, this is why we do a test. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the same process to make those into one of these. All right, I got all date done. That's what they turned out like. So now I need to, need to trim this off, so I'll have this little part of the tenon. Also, I'm gonna dress this down with the with a uh, tenon saw and cut it down so that it's slightly recessed and then sand these up.
This picture here shows all the slats after I ran them and cleaned them up. I have some detailed measurements that I recorded um, on the thickness of the tenons, uh, just so I can get a good fit in the mortise of the chair. These last couple pictures uh, show the slats after they're installed on the chair back. I wanted to kind of just illustrate how good these look when I'm finished. Um, very uniform, uh, very good surface finish, and uh, they fit up perfectly. So this is the workflow I use to make these parts. Uh, there's probably about 20 other ways to go about doing this, but um, this is how I chose to do it for this application. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.